What can we learn by what Donald Trump said? He said he only stands there when he was given his speech. He said he only stands there by the grace of Almighty God. What can you learn from that? What can I learn from that? Well, something that popped into my head right when he was giving God glory and giving God the honor, that he was the reason that he was still standing there on that day he was giving his speech. Now, you might say whatever you want to say or you might think whatever you want to think. You might have your own opinion. But one thing that we can learn from this is exactly what one of the mightiest kings in the Bible said towards God. And I'm not talking about David and I'm not talking about Solomon. Solomon was the wisest king and the richest king in the Bible. But do you know who the most powerful kingdom was in scripture? And it wasn't one of the kingdoms of Israel. The most powerful kingdom in Bible times. And as a matter of fact, God said to that king who was not a king of Israel, he compared him to a statue that had a golden head and then had feet mixed with iron and clay. And it just kept depreciating from there. The metal materials just kept getting less and less and less. But the top of the statue, the golden head that represents the empires of the world, the golden head, meaning the most powerful empire that will ever exist, that has ever existed, God said it with his own mouth. He was talking about Babylon. And not just any Babylon, the Babylon that King Nebuchadnezzar was king of. God said with his own mouth that Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon was the golden head. But he was talking about the empires of the world. And God was telling Nebuchadnezzar how the empires of the world were just going to keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Till finally there was going to be a mountain that was going to grow from a small little stone that was going to crumble those empires that was going to dwarf those empires. There was going to be a little stone that was going to grow into a giant mountain that then all the people of the world would be able to live on. And we know that that little stone is Jesus Christ. The same way that David swung a stone into Goliath's head is the same way that God from heaven swung his stone, Jesus Christ, to this earth to defeat sin and death. And the kingdom of God is growing and the kingdom of God is becoming that great mountain that we can find our refuge in, that we can stand on top of. He is that sure foundation, Jesus Christ. But Nebuchadnezzar, the mightiest king, the mightiest kingdom, God said it with his own mouth. He could have learned something from Donald Trump. Let me tell you something. People might have flaws. People might have errors. People might have mistakes. But one thing that you and me cannot afford to do is you and me cannot afford to get prideful with God and to stop giving him his place. Donald Trump said, Almighty God, by his grace, I'm still here today. And that resonated with me. Because if Nebuchadnezzar, after God told him he was the most powerful empire that will ever exist, if Nebuchadnezzar would have recognized that, then what happens to him and what we're going to read wouldn't have happened to him. But in a way, we can learn from this. It's good that it happened to him in a way so that we can learn from this. Look what happens here. Daniel chapter 4, verse 28 through 34. Did you know that Nebuchadnezzar was saved? Did you know that Nebuchadnezzar was even an author in the Bible? Because who's the one saying this story? He is. Nebuchadnezzar. He's the one giving this story. He's saying it with his own mouth. Nebuchadnezzar got saved before he passed away and he went to heaven because that's the desire of God. The desire of God is that no one should perish. God wants all people to have the opportunity to be able to be saved. God says that he does not rejoice with the death of the wicked. God's heart and God's desire, that's why he sent his son Jesus Christ, is that mankind should have the opportunity to have salvation and to have forgiveness of sins. But look what happens here to Nebuchadnezzar. Right after God tells him that he's going to be the most powerful empire, he has a dream. And he has a dream of a giant tree. And something happens to that giant tree. It gets cut down, but only the stump remains. Daniel, you've heard of Daniel. Daniel interprets the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, and he's scared. Daniel's very scared with this dream because it means that Nebuchadnezzar is going to get chopped down. In other words, his kingdom is going to get taken away from him. So Daniel has this dream, I'm sorry, this interpretation, and Nebuchadnezzar is given advice by Daniel, and Daniel tells him, look, king, my advice to you is that you love justice, walk humble, you know, don't get prideful. That's what Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, don't get prideful. Well, one year passes by, literally 12 months later passed by, and Nebuchadnezzar forgets the advice of Daniel, and he gets prideful. Now, this is what I want to tell you. 
we can learn a lot from that statement and we need to stay in that statement. We need to recognize that statement every day, no matter in our lowest places or no matter in our highest places. We need to stay with that mentality that everything that we have is by the grace of Almighty God. And if you can hold on to that mentality, if you can really stand on that belief, if you can really stand on that statement that what you have that anything good that happens to your life or any victory that you have in your life or success that you have in your life, if you can stand and if you can recognize that everything that we have every day that we're alive, if you can recognize that it's by the grace of Almighty God, then you're heading in the right direction. And you might have flaws and you might have errors, but you're heading in the right direction because the Bible says that God gives more grace to the humble. Just by you being humble, you're already heading in the right direction and God's grace is in your life. Look what happens here to Nebuchadnezzar. He becomes prideful. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, what the stump that was cut in half. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, can you imagine? He walks out and he sees his kingdom and it's amazing. Remember, it was the most powerful empire of the time. And look what he says in his heart. He says, is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty. There's a lot of my's in that. Anytime you start saying me or I or I or mine, anytime there's a lot of minds and a lot of eyes in your conversations, you need to be humble. You need to watch out because there's a lot of mine in this. By my mighty power as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty, while the words were still in his mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. I don't know about you, but I don't want the grace of God to depart from my life. And how can I make sure that the grace of God stays in my life? By always acknowledging that the grace comes from God. By acknowledging that victory, that strength, that health, that days of life, everything, any good thing that I have, I need to always acknowledge sincerely I need to always acknowledge that everything I have comes from Almighty God. But look what the voice tells Nebuchadnezzar. He says, To you it has been spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, meaning seven years you're going to live thinking you're a, a wild animal. He, Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind, and he thought he was a cow for seven years. Until you know... Until you learn this, basically. Until you learn this, that the Most High rules the kingdoms of men and gives it to whom he will. You know what he's saying? He says, you just walked out and you said, this is my kingdom, my, my power has built it. This is my Babylon. He says, look, 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 look. You need to understand that kings are let be kings by God. God is the one that lets them be kings. That kingdoms are kingdoms. Kingdoms are let be kingdoms. Because God is letting them be kingdoms. Every good thing that we have comes from God. He says, and you're going to live like a wild animal for seven years until you learn this. That every good thing comes from God. The only reason you're even king. The only reason you're not even drooling over your speech. The only reason that you even have the ability to speak and think at the same time is because of God. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair grew long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were bird claws. In other words, his nails became nappy, no more manicured. His hair became full of dreadlocks, no more nice hair. He was a king. He was used to being pampered. He was used to looking nice. Not anymore. He's looking like a wild animal, thinking he's a wild animal for seven years. But look what happens after seven years. After seven years, Nebuchadnezzar was trapped in the prison of his own mind. And after seven years, even though he was not able to act right, he was acting like a, like a cow, like an ox, but he was still having reason in his head. So for seven years, he was trapped in his head like a prisoner, and he was from the inside just looking at everything that he was doing, acting like a wild animal, but he was still conscious. And this is how I know he was still conscious. Because after seven years, God returns his reasoning to him. In other words, God gives him another opportunity to be able to give glory to God. And look what he does. He learns his lesson. Glory to God, Nebuchadnezzar learned his lesson. And this is the lesson that you and I need to learn also every day. And look what he says here, verse 34. At the end of the days, seven years, 
at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High God, and praised and honored Him who lives forever. So what did Nebuchadnezzar do? He starts glorifying God. And this is an amazing lesson that you and I can learn. Pay attention to this detail. How did all this mess begin? When he had his eyes on the kingdom. When he had his eyes on the earthly, he became prideful. But how did that mess end? How did he get his deliverance? When he took his eyes off the earthly. When he took his eyes off of the earthly things. And he put his eyes on God. In other words, he stopped taking glory for what he had. And he started giving God the glory because he understood that everything comes from the Lord. And that's what I want to tell you today. We need to recognize that everything we have, any victory, any triumph, anything that you and I will ever have, will always be by the grace of Almighty God. Learn from Nebuchadnezzar and don't rob, because that's what it is, and don't rob the glory from the Lord. He is the one that breathed the breath of life into mankind in the beginning in the book of Genesis. Even the breath that you're taking right now is all because of the grace of Almighty God. Remember that. I pray this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. So press the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And if you want to show your appreciation for these videos or for my channel, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's called Super Thanks. Super Thanks is a feature right there next to the share button. Super Thanks are always greatly appreciated. They're always a great blessing to my life. And July is my birthday month. So if you would like to give a Super Thanks for my birthday month, that will also be greatly appreciated. The second way that you can show your appreciation is something like this. It's called Channel Memberships. My channel memberships is $5 a month, about $1.25 a week. And in return, you get special badges, special stickers that pop up next to your name every time you leave a comment. And anytime I archive a video or go live and archive it, you're going to have access to that archive video. So if you would like to become a channel member, channel memberships are also a great blessing to my life. And I believe that the videos will also be a blessing to your life. You can click the link in my description. And do me a favor, before you click off, watch one of these videos. I hope and I pray that they will continue to be a great blessing to your life. God bless you, and I'll see you soon, Lord willing.